Hi friends, welcome to lesson two of Science is a Verb. We're gonna talk about measurement. So this is a model of a helium atom and here are a bunch of balloons that are filled with helium atoms. How many atoms of helium are in these balloons? So there's this many helium atoms in the balloons, give or take a couple billion or trillion or so. About 6.0 times 10 to the 23rd helium atoms. And the point here that I wanna make is that we can't just say that's a lot of helium atoms. In science, we absolutely need to be able to measure these things in order to get a handle on them, in order to build the kinds of evidence we need to make the kinds of conclusions that we wanna make. So let's talk about numbers in science. You probably noticed that over the course of your scientific careers, there have been an increasing reliance on numbers. And a good question might be, why does science use so many numbers? Here's a quote from Nathaniel West, which says, numbers constitute the only universal language. And that kind of gets at the point. As scientists, we can be studying in French, we can be studying in English, we can be studying in Latin. It really shouldn't matter what language we use. Numbers enable us to have a universal discussion. So that the number three is always going to be the number three, no matter where we are in our conversations, no matter what language we're using. And that's why numbers are really the gold standard for proof in science. And that's why you'll be expected basically to pretty much always prove things numerically or quantitatively, as we might say, and move away from those qualitative observations that have occupied so much of your training, probably to this point. By the way, the focus on numbers is only going to increase as you go into the future. So next year in physics, you're going to have even more numbers than you're going to get this year. And this year, chemistry is often going to seem like a math class. We measure things in order to get meaning out of them. So Mark Twain once said, get your facts at first, and then you can distort them as much as you please. And what he meant was you need to absolutely get an understanding of what the real measure of the situation is before you can start to interpret it. Of course, he meant it in his cynical Mark Twain way, but it still gets at the same point. The way that we construct meaning in science is through measuring things, and that goes back to that notion of numbers. It's all about data. When we start collecting these measurements and start putting them together, that's gonna to give us the data that we use to determine whether or not the hypotheses that we have about a particular situation or phenomena under consideration are supported or are not supported by the reality that we're investigating. So data is incredibly important, and as we start to deal with data, there are some rules that we're going to need to use when we're measuring data, and then when we're dealing with data that's been given to us. So let's talk about a couple of things. The first is that reference table D in the New York State Chemistry Reference Tables is all of the chemistry units that you're going to need over the course of your year in chemistry. Although Celsius isn't on this table and you'll probably be using Celsius quite a bit as well, you could use Kelvin for everything, but a lot of times then you just have to convert out of Celsius and there really won't be a point. So even though Celsius is not on this reference table, these are all of the units that you'll be expected to use over the course of your chemistry investigation, which I think is really nice that New York State gives those all to you. What we're going to use in science is the metric system essentially exclusively. We're going to get away from English units like pounds or feet and we're really only going to focus on the metric system and the metric systems units. Metric system units are based on universal constants of different phenomena that we've investigated over the course of scientific history up to this point. And there are seven base units in the system. What's nice about chemistry is that we're really only going to use five of these units. The ampere, which is a measurement of electrical current, and the candela, which is a measurement of luminous intensity, are really only used in physics. The other really important reference table to use when we're doing our investigations and taking our data is reference table C, which is the table of metric system prefixes. As you probably have already learned, metric units are modified as you go up or down by a power of 10. They use base 10 conversions and other words. And we use a series of prefixes to indicate magnitude. You've probably learned all of the prefixes starting from kilo, which is 10 to the third, or a thousand of the base unit, and going all the way down to milli, which is 10 to the negative third, or a thousandth of the base unit. Outside of that range, every three additional powers of 10 is given another prefix. So for instance, if you go up another power of three from kilo, you'll be at 10 to the six, and that's called mega, which you don't even have to know. It's not on this reference table. If you go down another three powers of 10 from milli, you'll be at 10 to the negative six, which is micro. And another three powers of 10 from there brings you to 10 to the negative nine or nano or a billionth of a base unit and so on and so forth all through this table. So it's good to get, have a handle on these prefixes because you should expect to see things like micro and nano and pico in your chemistry investigations and you should be, have a good handle on how to deal with them but you can always look at the reference table if you need it. 
you want to start to get a handle of which metric unit is best for what. So on page six of your unit one packet, you'll see some examples of the appropriate measurement to use. So yeah, you could use a unit like a meter to measure the distance between two cities, but that would kind of be like the equivalent of using feet to measure the distance between two cities. And as we know, that unit is a little bit too small for that task. It's a good idea to take a look at this list of which unit to use for what and get a good handle on why it is appropriate for that particular circumstance. If you have any difficulty with this, you might want to look up the conversions for things like meters to feet or kilograms to pounds in order to put those units which may be new to you into a familiar context being that we live in the English system here in America. This is as good a time as any to talk about the math rules that we're going to use in chemistry. There are only a couple, but I think it's really important that you get a good handle on them. The first is the n cubed rule, and n cubed just stands for no naked numbers. This is a pretty simple rule. It just means that all numbers have to have units written after them wherever that's possible. There'll be a couple of cases where we deal with unitless quantities in this course, but that'll be the exception and definitely not the rule. So whenever we use a quantity that has a unit, you absolutely have to put that unit after your measure. The next rule is the no work, no credit rule, which you probably understand, but let's go over it just to make sure. So that just means that you have to show your work when doing math problems. You want to put down the equation that you use. You want to substitute in the values that you're going to substitute in for before you put down the answer when you solve for a particular variable or whatever you think that answer is. We definitely want to see work wherever work needs to be shown. It's important to understand that if you don't use these math rules consistently, you risk credit endangerment. Please make sure that you adhere to all of these math rules going forwards. So that's it for this lesson. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or complaints, please don't hesitate to leave them either in the comments for the video or you can get in touch with me through the information in the info field down below the video. Thanks again. I really appreciate it. Take it easy. Bye.